Good morning, Mount Vernon Baptist Church. Good morning to everyone who is gathered here on this Lord's Day. It's so good for us to be together once again. I want to welcome you if you're in this room. I want to welcome you if you're joining us online, uh, whether that's happening live or whether that's happening later on. It's good for us to be together. And so let's begin by singing praises to the Lord. Stand if you're able to do so. And we're going to let the music start and we're going to read a little bit from Isaiah 40 and then we'll sing. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Let's sing. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God.
Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him. Tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him ever in joyful song. I hope that uh, that's a reality in your life, that he's the Lord of your life and that you understand his power. In his glory today. If, if you have come here today, we, we believe every time we come together to hear the word of God, to praise him, that he has something for each of us. If you need to be comforted today, if you need to be exhorted today, if you need to be convicted today, that your heart is open to that. We're so glad that you guys are joining us uh, online, you guys that are here. We look forward uh, with expectation to what God is going to say to us today as we praise him through song, through giving, through the preaching of the word. Let's bow our heads and uh, let's thank God for his indescribable gift in Christ uh, and give him our time and ourselves. Father, we thank you for this day. Oh, God, we thank you. It is so good to be in the house of God. It is so good to be with your people. We thank you that, that folks who are, are far off can, can join us virtually. Uh, that they can, they can be part of what you're doing this morning. Lord, we do praise you because you are worthy of it no matter what our circumstances are. And you surely, Jesus, you have borne our sorrows. You have carried our griefs. And you are with us in the joys and you are with us in the times that are hard and in the sorrows. So we praise you this day. We exalt you, Jesus, and draw all men to yourself and do in each of us through your spirit, that which is most needful in each of our lives. And we'll thank you for it and praise you and tell of your excellent greatness. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand once again. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when strife Of love and righteousness, 
destroyed by the ones we came to save. Till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live.
What love could remember? No wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, He counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without a bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What patience would wait as we constantly roam? What Father so tender is calling us home? He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Since they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many. What riches of kindness He lavished on us his blood was the payment, His life was the cost. We stood neath the debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. got a Lord that's merciful, forgiving, aren't you? I, I trust I'm here with a group of sinners. And our Lord is willing to save us, and as many as our sins are, His blood covers it all. What a blessing to have such a Lord. Uh, glad you're here today to worship the Lord. And uh, one of the things we want to do now is go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we pray through life and hardships and troubles. Join me now as we pray together. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of worshiping you together and then those by way of live stream. Lord, thank you for giving us life. And we realize, Lord, each one of us that are Christians, 
that our purpose here is to glorify you. And that's all. Forgive us for so many times in our life and years we didn't see our focus is to elevate you and to glorify you. Lord, as our country has celebrated an event that happened 20 years ago and it brought reality and a change, a positive change in many ways, and we thank you for that. Lord, it helped us realize that we have no idea about the next moment, that we must live it in commitment to you and trusting and confidence in you and prepared at any moment if this were our last. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of worshiping together with uh, numerous people today that are in their 90s or near 90s. And you're so good to give us time to be able to be with these kind of people. For how you've made it possible some can walk again. How you've healed, how you've brought people through surgeries this past week. We think of, about Kathy and Mike and uh, uh, St- uh, Brother Shepherd and others. And count upon your continual hand, restoring and strengthening. Thank you for how you've watched over Phyllis. Lord, it's a privilege to know each other and love each other and to be able to walk together through crisis. We pray you'll open our eyes today that we'll be true and faithful to you and hearts will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'll take your Bible, I want you to turn this morning to 2 Chronicles chapter 17. Yes, I said 2 Chronicles chapter 17. Verse 1 through 6, and then we're going to flip over to chapter 20. We're going to begin a study now on Jehoshaphat. You know, we've enjoyed a time of Philemon and Onesimus and uh, Jehoshaphat. You say, what did you say? That's right. He was one of the kings of Judah. In fact, he was one of the great kings of Judah uh, that stood out. Uh, you have King David, you have Solomon, you have Jehoshaphat and Hezekiah. And uh, those are the great kings. Uh, Friend, every person stands out for something in your life. And I hope that you see and recognize that you want to be stood out for by being a child of God. Uh, As we look at lives... We can see errors, we can see directions, we can see results. And I hope it will help you to realize how I want to live personally. Uh, Each one of us, God has put here. And either we're going to fulfill it or we're going to mess up. And most folks are messing up around us. Uh, They're not living like they should. So... um, I want us to look at Jehoshaphat, pick out some good things out of his life. Now, he's just like every one of us. He sins. We're going to take about three times on Jehoshaphat. We're not covering all his life. We don't have the time. But we're going to hit three important things, I feel, for our day and our time. So if you will stand with me as we read 2 Chronicles. It's in the Old Testament, chapter 17. Now, you know, if you want to read more about Jehoshaphat, then you can read 1 Kings chapter 15 through 22. Uh, The neat thing about Chronicles and Kings, uh, these books are parallel. They they have the same stories and add a little different things. And so in the Old Testament, like in the New Testament, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you say, well, I saw that in Matthew. Well, it's in Mark too. Yeah, Luke, yeah, it does that. Okay, in the Old Testament, we have that as well. And it's in Kings and Chronicles as both of these give the lives of uh, the leaders and rulers through the age you'll find so in kings as well. And so you get a little bit more insight on those. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 17. They just finished up with King Asa. Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place 
and strengthen himself against Israel. He placed forces in all the fortified cities of Judah, set garrisons in the land of Judah, and the cities of Ephraim that Asa his father had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the earlier ways of his father David. Note that. The Lord was with him because he walked in the earlier days of his father David. He did not seek the Baals, but sought the Lord his, of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the practices of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah brought tribute to Jehoshaphat and he had great riches and honor. His heart was courageous or lifted up, the King James says, in the ways of the Lord. And furthermore, he took the high place of, of Asherim out of Judah. Now turn with me to chapter 20, verse 31. It kind of gives the synopsis of his life, just a very brief uh, remark about his life. Thus Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Ashrabab, the daughter of Shehi. He walked in the ways of Asa, his father, and did not turn aside from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. The high places, however, were not taken away. The people had not set their hearts upon God of their fathers. You may be seated. You know, every one of us decide what you're going to do with your life. You're in charge. <laughs> uh, there's nobody in charge of your life but you. And so what you do is, is your life. At the end of it, we're so glad to have L.C. or Levi here with us today. Um, and, and, you know, his wife recently passed away, and oh, what a great testimony she had. Well, listen, every one of us are going to have a testimony of our life. And what's yours going to be like? What are they going to say about you? Okay, it all depends on how you decide you are going to lead your life. You're in charge. Some of you are young people here, and you, yes, you're going to make up your own mind how you're going to live. It's your decision. Uh, one old Indian I heard about, uh, uh, they were asking about his life, and he said, well, you know, my life is made of two dogs. I've got a good dog and a bad dog in my life. And they said, okay, you've got two dogs in your life, so who wins, the bad dog or the good do dog? <laughs> he said, uh, the one I feed that's the one that wins. And you know, in our life, it's what we aim for that makes a difference. Now you can either aim, I am going to fight everything, I'm going to be mad about everything, I'm going to rebel against everything, or you can decide, I'm going to live for Christ. I'm going to go with Him, His way. And Jehoshaphat did that. Now, all of them didn't. And, and, and we trace it back to his home life, uh, where he came from. Uh, it, it begins, his father was Asa. Uh, we tend to be, uh, this old saying, you know, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Not always true. I wore a shirt this week, I, you know, my Kids give me all these clothes and I don't know what to do with them. So I know it's not Father's Day, so I just decided to wear it anyway. It's about a father and how it's, uh, you know, the first model of the daughter and all that kind of stuff. So I wore it and I was in the grocery store and the lady looked at it. And she said, oh, I love your shirt. She said, my father abandoned me. But someone else adopted me. <laughs> so she said, I, I had that. Listen, friend. We do not get to choose our parents. You realize that? Our parents, God gives us, and some of you say, and I had a dear preacher friend this week come to me, and he said, you know what? My daddy hates me. We do not have to be what our parents were. 
And I praise God, I've seen so many folks, for example, that have parents that were drunks. And they say, you know what? I'm not going to be that way. And praise God, with God's help, you can be what God wants for your life. Just because you're programmed through parents to direct a certain way doesn't mean you've got to be that way. When you turn your heart toward God and let Him know, Lord, I need you. I am a sinner, and I see what sinners are. I don't want to be like that. God is able to change and redirect your life in His way. What a blessing. And I hope you'll do that. And it says about uh, Jehoshaphat, it begins and it says, He did not take, bring his family up in the ways of Israel. Uh, there are two kingdoms that divided after Solomon's death and uh, Rehoboam became the king. Uh, Rehoboam took the little bottom parts. It's only two, two tribes. Ten tribes were up north. And that was a big crowd. Uh, that, when they did that... Uh, Rehoboam went up there and built two golden cows and had people worship it. And that's what the majority of the people were doing. And it says about Jehoshaphat, he did not do the way of uh, most of the people, the Israelites. Israel, up north, he refused to do like they did and worship Baal. He worshiped God. We're living in a time right now, friend, where I'm going to say we're just like Jehoshaphat. Most of the people do not worship God. They don't care about God. They don't think about God. It doesn't even enter their mind. But Jehoshaphat said, I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to serve God. I'm not serving Baal. I know most folks worship those gods. Um, we watch as some of our friends uh, every Sunday take off uh, on their RVs and their boats. Um, and God's not even thought about uh, that's the way most folks are doing. Uh, if you notice, most folks aren't here. If we'd go to the beach, you'd see all your friends there. <laughs> uh, so what's going on? Okay, friend, we get to personally decide how we're going to live our life. And Jehoshaphat did. He decided, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm going to do, and, and in our text here in verse 3, it says uh, he did it in the way of his... Uh, of David. His granddaddy, <laughs> his granddaddy was bad. You know, it's, it's great if you got good parents. Some of us were privileged, some weren't. His daddy was pretty good, Asa. His granddaddy was real born. Mm, that was one bad man. It's sad to think you got a granddaddy that's bad. Because a lot of us idolize our grandparents, and they're really famous. That's why some of you got big heads here. You got grandkids that think you're just wonderful. And uh, I understand that. But his, grand, his granddaddy was no good. Now, his great-granddaddy, Solomon. And then you go back, and there was David. David, and it says that he followed in the way of David in his young days. Not that. You remember what happened when David got older? Ooh. God did a lot of bad things. But in his young days, he observed God. He walked with God. Let me, it is awful. It is awful for a man to walk with God in his young days and get old and get nasty and mean and bad. Come on, Christians. We don't need to end up bad. David ended up bad. Died at 70. His son, Solomon, Died at 58. Also, started good, went bad. Can that happen? That's why we're studying lives. Yes, you can start good, end bad. Rehoboam, he died at 57. <laughs> he wasn't good any of his life. None of his life. I don't guess the Rehoboam went to heaven at all. He had a son named Asa. Asa died at 69. We're looking today at Jehoshaphat, and you saw in the last verse it tells us about his life. He's going to die at 60. Come on, put your age in there. Figure out. We don't know how long we're going to live. 
Now, if we were putting this in the order, we might have changed it. But listen, God's in charge, and He's in charge of our life, how long we're going to live. Our job is to serve God as long as we've got life. It says about Jehoshaphat uh, in verse 16, verse 12. I want you to look at that verse with me. In the 39th year of his reign, we're talking about King Asa, his daddy. Asa was diseased in his feet. How many of y'all know what it is to be diseased in your feet? Raise your hand. You know what it is to be diseased in your feet. That's an awful disease. You don't want it. Know about it? People die with that. It became, his disease became severe. Listen to this. Yet, even in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but sought help from physicians. Did you note that was in the Bible? Here's a man that was sick. And he was pretty good. He destroyed some of the idols and did things like that. And he'd reign. He got back some cities from Judah, uh, from Israel. But here's a man. He went to the doctors. But the scripture condemns him. Because you didn't ask God for help. Is anything wrong with going to the doctors? No, it's not. But if you don't pray about it and ask God's help and you're just depending on the doctor's friend, we're in trouble. And that's where we're in trouble today. Because people, well, you know, the doctors say. You know, I, I looked at what the doctor said again this week. <laughs> the doctor said, first thing you really need to make sure you don't do is you don't need to go to worship with gathering with people. <laughs> I am not going to do that, friend, because my Lord told me not to forsake getting together and I'm not quitting. I'm not listening to that. No, don't tell me. Second thing, don't go to hotels. <laughs> we were getting ready to check in a hotel. Third thing, he says, don't eat in restaurants. Where I had plenty, we're going to be eating in restaurants. Friend, we live by faith in the Lord. Yes, you go to the doctors, you use your good sense. But you better talk to God. And, and someone was sick this week and I asked him, you know, uh, how about let's talk and talk. Yes, praise God. If you decide you don't need God and you're just going to go to the scientists today, you're, we're in trouble. And King Asa was. Asa had to live three years with a foot problem because he never talked to God about it. He, he went to the doctors back and forth, back and forth, and never talked to God. We've got a God that's listening, that's hearing us, friend. He wants to be involved in our life. And He does not want us to live without Him. Talk to Him about everything, about every problem. In fact, this morning I heard about somebody talking to God about their car. I thought, praise God. Glad you finally learned. I prayed over my cars for years. God's healed my cars. You said, God heals cars? Yes, God heals cars. I know it. I got testimony. Pray about everything. We're to be for people, God's people, talking to God, leaning on God through everything and doing what God says. That's our job. So for three years, you, you'll see a discrepancy in the number of years that Jehoshaphat reigned. You say, why is there a discrepancy? Because three years, he co-reigned with his daddy. Because his daddy couldn't get off his feet. He had problems. And so we find that uh, Asa was able to work with his daddy and learn some things. And I'm sure what a blessing to have that time where he was with his daddy and was able to pick out some of those things that were good in Asa's life, and he did it. Followed in his daddy's footsteps. And then this other little phrase in verse 6, um, the ESV says, his heart was courageous in the ways of the Lord. That's great. Uh, but the way that's usually translated through the, uh, out the Scripture is his heart was lifted up. Now, when I say that, when, when I say, well, uh, this particular person's heart was lifted up, you know what you're going to really think, and, and it's usually true most times using the Scripture, oh, man, they are so proud. They are so arrogant. 
They got a heart that's just so big. Uh, but this case, you know what he's saying? His heart was proud about the Lord. We are to be lifted up. Our hearts to be exalted over the Lord. Do that. Be proud of the Lord Jesus. The songs we sung this morning, are you proud of what God's done for us? All right? Just, and then folks say, well, you know, you just keep talking about Jesus. I sure do, because I happen to have a heart that's proud about Jesus. I'm going to exalt Him. All right, now, He wasn't perfect. And there's nobody we'll study in the Scripture that's perfect except Jesus. And so it reminds us we're all sinners. And so as we look at Jehoshaphat's life in verse 6, it says um, that uh, his heart was courageous. And he took away the asterium, the groves of asterium. And then uh, we see later where it says uh, they weren't all removed in chapter 20, verse 33. Uh, the asteriums were... Uh, we're not exactly sure. We started to show pictures of what they think, but there's several things. One, uh, it was a god. Uh, it really came kind of out of Egypt. And they built columns like totem poles and put carvings on it. Or then also it was groves of trees, like sometimes you see people... Uh, plant trees in a row for their driveways and that sort of thing. Uh, well, it was uh, groves of trees, and, and being there's not a whole lot of trees in Israel, uh, when you had that, that was kind of a place that you kind of worshipped under. Uh, I know in Africa we would find a tree and we worship under it. That would be our church. Uh, but they, uh, when you had a group of trees, you just kind of, all right, that's a holy place. And, and so in, in some of the archaeological digs, which is really troubling, they dug up and they found uh, the word of Asterium with Yahweh. In other words, this was a pagan god that was so mixed with the Lord that it kind of was indistinguishable. And, and here Jehoshaphat said, no, we're getting rid of that. Now in chapter 20 verse 33, he carries on about that and he says, but he didn't take care of all of them out because the people's heart wouldn't do it. So uh, the explanation of this is that very possibly he destroyed all these places and cut these trees down and these groves down and, and then the people said, no, we're not going to put up that. We're going to build them right back. And they may have done that. The people's heart weren't ready to do that. He was trying to lead in a way that the people weren't ready to do. Can you think of some ways in this country that we're so married with paganism that we wouldn't give it up? Think about all the idols and gods we have in America. Friend, we got a lot of things that's being worshipped today. And, and come on, let's just admit it. Some of us are taking some of those and we live for it. And God says, now, I, I only want to be worshipped. I, I, I don't want to share this with anybody else. You know some things in your life like that? I can. I can think of it. People didn't want that. Oh, don't take away all our gods. Our Lord only wants to be worshipped and loved. Friend, He is our only salvation. It's not the Lord and... No, it's just the Lord. You see, friend, He died for our sins. Nobody else did that. It's not that a doctor, and I thank God for the doctors and their medical ability, and I praise God every day as I learn more and more, and I praise God for it. And they, they can cut out a lot of things, but friend, they can't cut sin out. They can't get that out of our life. Only Jesus can do that. And friend, you're here today, we've all got that. Every one of us. And if it wasn't for Jesus, we'd all die and go to hell. Come on. And that's exactly what would happen. So I hope today that you'll say, Lord Jesus, I, I, I want to be a Jehoshaphat. I want to be a better person. Take my sin out of my life. 
with your blood. I believe in you. Follow him in baptism. Do that today. We'll invite you to do that in just a few moments. But then we find the Lord blesses Jehoshaphat. <laughs> um, it says in 8, uh, well, in the last verse, in verse 6, um, his heart was courageous. And uh, uh, well, and in verse 6, 5, and they brought tribute to Jehoshaphat, and he had great riches and honor. Here's a man served God, and people brought gifts to him and blessed him. And then you look in chapter 18, verse 1. <laughs> it says, had great riches and honor. He made it marriage alliance. Ooh, oh, that's, that's getting into something else. We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> but he had great riches. God blessed him. Has God blessed his people? One of the greatest blessings is God's presence was with him. Friend, that, that's one of the most wonderful things in the world, to have God's presence. If you're living for God, it is so neat to be a walk with God and know God's walking with you. Does he bless? Yes, he does. <laughs> you studied Job recently. God blessed that man, took it all away, gave it all back. Uh, God does bless God's folks. Uh, I haven't seen anybody God didn't bless if you're living for God. And friend, uh, there's many, many years in our life we had very, very little money. Very little of anything. But you know what? As we've looked back, God blessed. Through gifts. God would just give this, give that. And I, I realized one time, you know, God's blessed us all we need. It's just we can't afford it. We can't buy it. God just gives it. Uh, young in, in marriage and, and nothing much coming in, God took care of us. I dare say every believer would say that here. Trust God. He took care of Jehoshaphat. He also gave him years in his life in, in chapter 20. It says he's able to reign for 35 years. He's, uh, or started, uh, started 35 and reigned for 25 years. What a blessing. Long length of time. <laughs> Died at 60. We say, oh, that's, that's not real good. Well, friend... Look, we're not in charge of our life. And that's what's good. That's what God, time God gave him. And he lived it out. And, and then it names his parents. Asa and Azrubah. So what's important about that? I don't know. Except, let me say, it does name his mother. And by the way, uh, one of the neat things you can say about Rehoboam... Asa and Jehoshaphat, they only had one wife. They didn't do like <laughs> Solomon, oh my, that guy. He had a real problem, didn't he? And, and then David seemed to have a problem too. <sighs> but it names his mother. Why? You know, if you look in the Bible and try to find her and anything else about her, there's nothing else. But I contend, friend, for God to give the name of that mother, which is often left out, she evidently was one godly mother. Now, there are names of, of wives and mothers in the line of our Lord. And it's a reason for every time. And there were godly women that God used. But here his mother's given. He lived in the way of Asa, his daddy, but also his mother. Evidently a godly woman. Listen, what about you in your life? Doesn't matter you're man or woman. How are you going to live your life? You determine it. You're going to live for God? You know... In these days, I've decided I'm going to serve God no matter what. And I do have a good example in my family. My mother was declared with leukemia. The doctor told her in Wilson that you're only going to have two more years. And do not, do not gather in churches. That's the worst place you can go. When we had our baby, the doctor told us, 
for goodness sake, don't take your child to the nursery. They'll kill them at church. I'm used to that. We decided then, ours is going to church. By the way, this nursery we got here, probably cleaner than your house. And let me say, the church building probably is cleaner than your home too. Am I going to quit worship? We wondered. And I tell you the truth, I was kind of scared. I thought, Mama, I want you around. I don't want you to die. We didn't have any voice in it. They didn't ask us. They prayed about it. <laughs> they said, no, we're going to church. I said, okay. I watched her do that. And you know, God gave her 15 years. Every year we celebrate, well, this is going to be the last one. This is going to be the last. So we did that for 15 years. What a blessing. I believe God blessed her because she said, I am not going to be told I can't go to church. I know what God wants me to do. And friend, I'd rather die doing what God's told me to do than what some man tells me. What are you going to do with your life? Jehoshaphat decided it's going to go for God. How about you? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for walking with us. For some of our decisions in life are really, really hard. We have to decide if we're going to live for you or live the way most people are doing. And Lord, some of us have decided it's you because only you can cleanse us from our sins. And Lord, I believe you can take care of us. So we trust in you. Our life is yours. This morning you're here and you'd like to give your life to the Lord? Maybe you need to follow in baptism. You come today, right now, quickly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come quickly as we sing. Let's stand. Grab that microphone right there, Rick, and he's got an announcement for us. Well, good morning. I want to try to be brief. I know some of you are hungry, and they're already getting in line at Forks and Big Ed, so I try to be real brief. But I do have a message for you on behalf of the local missions ministry team of Mount Vernon. Some of you may have seen in the bulletin over the last few weeks, we're having a supply drive campaign for a local uh, nonprofit organization uh, called Human Coalition and there's a local branch called Health for Her and that organization has a great ministry in which they minister to young girls who are pregnant and are considering having an abortion or having the child and it's a ministry for those girls and certainly for the unborn children that they are uh, carrying and for the families of, of those babies so we're having a supply drive to uh, uh, collect donations from you all for various items that they're in need of for the children. And we have uh, many of you in your bulletins got a little flyer that has some five or six key items. Uh, there's also a link to a, a, a larger list, a longer list that they have. And uh, it's on this uh, flyer as well. And you all can email me as well. My email address is up here if you'd like me to send you a link to that Amazon wish list that they have. And of course, you could. That probably has two or three different items that you could uh, donate. But we're going to be collecting the next two weeks out here in the Welcome Center on the north side here. And you all can just bring uh, whatever you're willing to donate uh, next Sunday and the following Sunday before church or uh, after church. So if you have any questions, feel free to hang around and ask me uh, in the Welcome Center out here. And, uh, but we look forward to all being a part of that together. So thank you all. Thank you, Brother Rick and the local missions ministry team. Hadn't it been good to worship together this morning? 
It has. On your way out, there's offering baskets at the doors. Uh, for those of you who join us online, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, you can go right to our website, mvbcrally.com, and there's options there to give. There's also a contact form you can fill out and turn in your prayer needs. And so stay connected with us uh, through that medium. But let's pray and be dismissed to go out and uh, live this gospel in our community. Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you for the, the, the grace of being able to gather together today. Thank you for each person who's gathered in this room. Thank you for each person who's tuned in on the live stream. Lord, for the plans that you have for each life, each household. And Lord, I pray that, that we would, as we walk out of this place this morning, consider the course of our lives. Maybe you've spoken to someone about the need to, to make that decision to trust Christ for salvation. Lord, that they wouldn't leave this place this morning or lay down tonight to go to sleep without seeking out someone who can lead them in that. Lord, for those who you've convicted over some area in their life that you're calling them to, Lord, that you would not let them rest until they make that move of obedience. And so, God, as we go, that you would continue to deal with us this week and move us towards your purposes for our lives. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. And it's through Jesus we pray. Amen.